what I'm going to do today, as uh, uh, Janine alluded to, is uh, uh, talk about uh, a tumor suppressor, um, Merlin, encoded by the NF2 gene. Um, and uh, as a way of introduction, I'd like to tell you about uh, how we got into uh, the study of Merlin and what uh, and why. And, uh, and I hope you will understand then uh, what represent for us um, uh, the um, elucidation of the mechanism by which Merlin suppresses tumor regenesis. Uh, as Janine alluded to, we have been interested for quite some time in uh, elucidating the mechanism by which integrins, a receptor for extracellular matrix components, influence cell fate. And, uh, you know, throughout the years, uh, we elucidated several signaling pathways, and particularly, <coughs> we um, contributed to the discovery that integrins essentially impart positional control to the action of receptor tyrosine kinases, enabling uh, them to respond to soluble growth factors uh, only if cells are attached to the extracellular matrix. And obviously, the signaling pathway are necessary to enable cell proliferation, cell migration, as well as sur cell survival. Conversely, cell-to-cell -cell adhesion, which is mediated by cadherins, uh, restrains cell proliferation and cell migration uh, through mechanisms that are still uh, only partly understood. Um, we were interested actually in studying these mechanisms because they are uh, disrupted during tumor initiation and progression. And in fact, it's quite well known that uh, disruption of cell-to-cell -cell adhesion and changes in integrin uh, signaling facilitate uh, tumor invasion and thereby uh, uh, the initial steps uh, of the um, tumor um, metastasis cascade. Um, but what has been uh, somewhat uh, uh, poorly understood is whether changes in additional signaling per se could be sufficient for tumor initiation. And, and I think the work <coughs> I'm going to tell you about, the work on Merlin, provides the first evidence that the changes, uh, mutations in a tumor suppressor um, in, in a signaling pathway that uh, is uh, part of, um, um, is, is regulated through adhesion, um, um, contribute to respond, to respond to this question. So the NF2 suppressor was discovered in 93 uh, by positional cloning and uh, is, of course, a uh, uh, position on cloning that was done in, in uh, uh, families af 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 affected by type 2 familiar neurofibromatosis. See, these are, uh, this is a cancer predisposition syndrome uh, characterized by the development of bilateral schwannomas in the acranial nerve, in the auditory nerve, but also by the uh, development of other um, uh, seemingly, or at least initially benign, tumors uh, originating from uh, Schwann cells. And so there are also other cranial nerves that are affected, as well as spinal nerves. These patients also develop uh, meningiomas and epidemomas. And in accordance with the uh, model that uh, mutation in NF2 can lead to transformation of these cell types, also sporadic schwannomas, meningiomas, and epidemomas um, uh, exhibit uh, uh, loss of function mutations in the NF2 genes. But the NF2 gene is not only linked by this type of tumors, it's also inactivated in a very large fraction on malignant pleural mesoteliomas, uh, as well as in smaller fraction of renal uh, papillary carcinomas, cervical carcinomas, bladder urothelial carcinomas. And the spectrum actually of tumors in which NF2 is inactivated is uh, increasingly, is increasing at a quite rapid pace as uh, uh, we sequence uh, uh, more tumors. Uh, um, and, you know, unpublished results suggest that melanoma actually, um, um, con melanoma uh, samples uh, often contain mutations at the NF2 locus as well. Um, when uh, the NF2 gene was cloned in 93, um, it, 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 
caused somewhat of a stir because uh, the domain organization of Merlin is uh, very similar to the domain organization of Essin, Radixin, and Moisin. And these are proteins which were known to link uh, cell surface receptor to the cytoskeleton. <coughs> Hence the, you know, the proposal that, uh, that adhesion signaling in some way uh, was, uh, 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 or loss of adhesion signaling was uh, connected to the initiation of tumorigenesis. However, this model, as I will tell you, is, uh, uh, was essentially wrong. Uh, there are several differences between uh, uh, Merlin and the ERM proteins, so the first of which is, is the presence of a unique amino terminus, 17 amino acids, uh, which contains a potential uh, nuclear uh, uh, export sequence, and then a unique carboxy terminus that cannot, does not contain an actin binding site. In contrast, as you can see, Ezrin, Radixin, and Moisin, as well as Ben 4.1, uh, also contain a canonical actin binding site. And it was known uh, that ERM proteins uh, um, become active uh, when they are phosphorylated the carboxy terminus by rho kinase. And this phosphorylation disrupt uh, a, a head to tail interaction that keeps the proteins in a closed conformation, uh, enabling them to acquire an open conformation whereby the firm domain uh, is able to bind to the cytoplasmic domain of cell surface receptors, uh, such as uh, ICAMs, VCAMs, and CD44, and the carboxy terminus uh, uh, is uh, uh, available to bind to F-actin. Now, Merlin instead uh, um, is phosphorylated by a different kinase, P21 activated kinase, a target of RAC and CD42. And this phosphorylation has profoundly different consequences on the conformation of Merlin. Instead of opening up Merlin, it actually tightens up the closed conformation of Merlin. And uh, the, uh, uh, while the phosphorylated form of ERM proteins is active, um, as manifested by their ability, uh, the ability of the open forms to link the cell surface receptor to the actin cytoskeleton, the phosphorylated form of Merlin is inactive. So PAC-mediated phosphorylation inactivates Merlin. Um, so inactivates the growth inhibitory function of Merlin. So we identified Merlin uh, um, following up a cDNA screen uh, aimed at isolating uh, um, signaling components able to rescue uh, normal cells, in this case uh, endothelial cells, from contact inhibition. Essentially, we transduce a small library of, of, uh, of plasmids encoding uh, uh, signaling components into um, endothelial cells. So we identified PAC as the most potent signaling component able to rescue endothelial cells from contact inhibition. And then we and others discovered that PAC exerted this uh, uh, exit or promoted this exit from contact inhibition by phosphorylating and thereby inhibiting Merlin. And as you can see, loss of Merlin uh, um, by uh, uh, silencing uh, can induce uh, overproliferation confluent endothelial cells. This was the first evidence, in fact, that Merlin was involved in contact inhibition, and additional work indicated that it was also involved in uh, uh, um, anchorage-dependent growth. So if we eliminate Merlin, we not only cause overproliferation under confluent conditions, but we also see a great acceleration of cell cycle progression in sparse cells. Uh, when we enter this field, uh, um, there were a number of conflicting models uh, on the role of Merlin in uh, signaling. And Andy McClatch and others had proposed that Merlin would be able to bind directly to the cytoplasmic domain of receptor tyrosine kinases, such as the EGF receptor, blocking their signaling capacities. Others had proposed that Merlin would influence the trafficking of these receptors to the cell surface, essentially in blocking this trafficking. 
and the number of uh, um, biochemical approaches that led to the identification of potential interactors, predominantly to the, the East through hybrid screen. However, we could not reproduce any of these interactions, including the interaction with the EGF receptor. And in parallel, work in Drosophila had suggested that Merlin could act upstream of the HIPPO signaling pathway. Um, and the HIPPO signaling pathway uh, upstream components lead to the uh, activation of the HIPPO kinase in mammalian cells MST12, which combined with the adapter Salvador in order to phosphorylate its target, uh, um, the uh, serine threonine kinase LATS, which in turn phosphorylates and inactivate the transcriptional coactivator YAP and TAS. And in Drosophila, uh, it was clear that expanded uh, could activate the pathway and could cooperate actually with Kibra to activate the pathway. And Georg Alder showed that uh, uh, <coughs> loss of uh, Merlin and uh, loss of expanded could exert similar effect, although actually loss of Merlin was less efficient in inducing uh, the um, uh, activation of YAP. However, the two mutations would cooperate. That is, uh, inactivation of expanded and Merlin would cause overproliferation in the fly wing <coughs> to a higher extent than the inactivation of each signaling component. But we were struck by the fact that actually simple inactivation of Merlin was not sufficient to cause significant overproliferation <coughs> in the fly. And this is clearly distinct from the mammalian system where NF2 is a tumor suppressor, is a well-established tumor suppressor, and inactivation of Merlin in mammalian cells is sufficient to cause uh, profound, uh, a profound increase in proliferation. So we, we thought uh, early on that there were differences in the, uh, in the uh, mechanism by which uh, uh, Merlin would suppress proliferation in the fly and in mammalian cells. So we decided to uh, uh, approach this problem in uh, a rather direct fashion and, to fashion and to use tandem affinity purification followed by mass spectrometry to identify novel interactors on Merlin. Um, and uh, we used as a bait uh, uh, either an amine or a carboxy terminal uh, uh, tagged form of uh, uh, um, a wild type Merlin, and there's a control, an amino terminally tied form of a Merlin feud mutant that is prevalent in NF2. This is a mutation in uh, uh, the F1 lobe of the firm domain that leads to the unfolding of, of this domain. So it's a severe mutation, and we decided to use it as a control. And as you can see here, we isolated. Uh, two proteins of 170, 127 kilodaltons, which we uh, then identify uh, as DCAF1 and DBDB1, respectively. And then by using uh, uh, nano LCMSMS on gel stacks, we had different, uh, identify additional specific components interacting uh, specifically with wild type Merlin, including CUD4B. Uh, and so these three proteins are components of uh, cooling ring for ligases. Uh, these ligases are characterized uh, by uh, these general architectures illustrated here. They have a cooling for uh, scaffold that links the uh, ROC1 uh, uh, to uh, the um, substrate recognition uh, part of the complex that contains an, an adapter, DDP1, and the substrate recognition subunit uh, DCAF. DCAF stands for DDB1 uh, um, complex associated factor. And there are more than 50 different uh, DCAF proteins. Uh, and so this class of ligases can recognize a very large number of substrates. And uh, they were actually identified uh, approximately at the same time we were uh, doing these uh, tandem affinity purification experiments. Uh, um, but it, and so their function, the function of these ligases was not uh, known, but some had been implicated in regulating proliferation, survival, and uh, DNA repair. Uh, now, most of them had been uh, um, implicated in uh, uh, regulating ubiquitylation of histones or uh, 
transcription factors, and, and some of them had been demonstrated to localize to the nucleus. And, and so this led us to um, investigate the localization of cool 4 cuf one the specific ligase we had found uh, uh, associated with Merlin, and we found it to be concentrated almost exclusively in the nucleus. And, uh, and therefore, we started to re-examine the localization of Merlin. Merlin uh, had been uh, previously localized uh, at the plasma membrane, especially at the cell cortex in correspondence of lamellipodia in sparse cells uh, or adherence <coughs> junctions in confluent cells, but nobody had seen it in the nucleus. And we uh, actually realized that this was due to the fact that uh, uh, the antibodies that they had been used uh, recognized epitopes that were masked in the nucleus. And actually, we developed, uh, a, you know, actually it's a very simple uh, fixation and permeabilization procedure that enabled us to uh, see Merlin in the nucleus. And as you can see, under these conditions, so the large majority of Merlin is in the nucleus. These are really monospecific antibodies. In blotting, they only uh, recognize Merlin. And if you knock down Merlin, the staining is completely eliminated. And then immunoprecipitation experiments. Um, um, and uh, well, first the cell fractionation experiment uh, revealed that a significant fraction uh, of Merlin is in the nuclear fraction, actually in the nuclear soluble fraction. But also, it is this fraction of Merlin that combines with cool 4 decaf one So this led to the, to the model that Merlin would translocate into the nucleus and bind there to cool 4 decaf one And uh, we performed a number of mutagenesis experiments that um, mapped the, uh, or uh, defined the mechanism by which Merlin interacts with decaf one We discovered that the firm domain of Merlin is sufficient for binding uh, to the CAF1 and binds specifically to the carboxy terminal 100 amino acids of the CAF1. This is a, a, a portion of the uh, CAF1 that is immediately downstream of the WD40 domain involved in interaction with the DB1. And then by using positive expression mutation and inactivation as well as depletion, we demonstrated that Merlin function as a negative regulator of cool 4 decaf one which in turn promotes uh, cell proliferation. And, and thereby, uh, uh, the model emerged that Merlin suppresses proliferation by inhibiting uh, cool 4 decaf one Now, these experiments were very convincing, but of course, uh, the uh, model that Merlin would enter into the nucleus and function by suppressing cool 4 decaf one was very new, and we were unlikely to be uh, um, uh, to, to face favorable reviews at the major journal unless we really uh, uh, convinced everybody that this was the mechanism by which Merlin suppressed tumorigenesis. And critical to this was the, uh, um, the study of missense mutations uh, in Merlin. These mutations, um, predominantly mapped to the firm domain of Merlin. And although many of them disrupt the folding of this domain, um, uh, some of them uh, only change uh, surface residues. And actually, one specific mutation only change, uh, changes the charges at the surface of, uh, um, of the firm domain. Um, so we decided to first uh, uh, identify mutations uh, which among those described were more, uh, uh, were bona fide mutations, uh, um, uh, loss of function mutations. Uh, uh, first, uh, we restricted our analysis to mutation which tracked with disease within individual families of NF2, or mutations which appear in more than one uh, sporadic tumors. And then, uh, we uh, validated uh, the, them as tumor-derived mutations, a pathogenic mutation, by simply reintroducing them in NF2 mutant mesothelioma cells. As you can see here, if you reintroduce wild-type Merlin, or even better, an unphosphorylatable form of Merlin, you can suppress the proliferation of these cells to a significant extent. A phosphorylation mimating mutant is less active. A classical tumor-derived mutant has no activity in this assay. 
And the large majority of the mutation we tested were also unable to suppress proliferation, with the exception of a mutation which actually did not um, um, pass uh, our screen and we used as a control. This was a mutation which we were suspicious of, had only been identified in a single sporadic tumor and there was no uh, analysis on normal tissue. And in fact, as you can see, this, no, this is probably a passenger mutation on an allelic polymorphism because it retained the ability to suppress proliferation. And then we tested the ability of these various mutants on Merlin to interact uh, with cult 4 decaf one by co-immunoprecipitation, and as you can see, the result was very clear. Wild-type Merlin interacts uh, with cult 4 decaf one here and here, but none of the bona fide, sorry, this is the non-pathogenic mutant, so the either wild type or non-pathogenic mutant interacts with cool 4 decaf one but none of the tumor-derived mutants interact with cool 4 decaf one And subsequent experiments uh, revealed that uh, the mutants uh, um, that are more prevalent in NF2 fall into four classes. So there are mutants uh, <coughs> such as L141P and A211D, which do not interact uh, uh, in vivo with cul 4 decaf one because they are unable to enter into the nucleus. However, in vitro, they can bind to decaf. There are mutants uh, such as F62S and E270G, which accumulate uh, in the nucleus to near normal levels however, are unable to bind to decaf in vitro. And finally, there are mutants that are both unable to enter into the nucleus as well as to interact with decaf. So these are the missense mutants. So we also analyzed two different truncation mutations. And what we discovered was <coughs> that these mutants are able to enter into the nucleus, are able to bind to decaf, in fact, to higher levels than wild-type Merlin. However, they are, these mutants are totally unable to suppress ligase activity in in vitro uh, ubiquitylation assays. And so I think this provides compelling evidence uh, that uh, the pathway we had found is indeed responsible for tumor suppression. Um, to finally test this uh, short of, 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 of mouse genetics, we use a xenograph model. These are NF2 mutant schwannoma cells derived uh, uh, from NF2 conditional uh, knockout mice. Um, this one, Noma said, what we did was to uh, knock down uh, DCAF1 with two different short terpenes, uh, as well as a control uh, re-express it and, uh, in the knockdown cells. And as you can see, when we knock down uh, uh, DCAF1 with two different short terpene RNAs, we can um, suppress uh, uh, tumor growth to a significant extent. And uh, this is rescued by moderate overexpression of a, a messenger RNA insensitive form of DCAF. And what I want to point out is that actually the scales here are different. That this moderate overexpression of DCAF is actually able to stimulate uh, tumor growth in a, a Merlin null uh, background, suggesting it, consistent, in fact, with the fact that the, the possibility that DCAF1 uh, uh, could not only function as a mediator of N2 loss driven tumor regenesis, but also potentially as a, as a, as a proto oncogen. Uh, in, in collaboration with Oliver Hahnemann at the uh, Peninsula uh, University in England, we analyze NF2-derived uh, primary schwannoma cells. So these are patients-derived cells, uh, and uh, um, we, have normal, we have normal controls. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the normal uh, uh, Schwann cells proliferate to a relatively limited extent, that, and they are not affected by knockdown or decaf. Uh, but the NF2 mutant uh, primary schwannoma cells uh, overproliferate to a large extent and this overproliferation is reversed in three patients derived primary cells by knockdown of decaf. So the, uh, we concluded that diphosphorylated Merlin uh, is able to enter into the nucleus and to inhibit cul 4 decaf one 
and uh, uh, that this uh, relatively simple uh, pathway was responsible uh, for tumor suppression. And of course, uh, the implication from this study was that cool 4 d cuf one would uh, uh, modify uh, gene expression by uh, ubiquitilating uh, um, uh, one or more target uh, that remained uh, to be identified. Um, so in 2011, um, uh, <coughs> work by others had uh, contributed to the uh, placing uh, uh, perhaps more solidly firm Merlin upstream of the hippo pathway in Drosophila. But this work also, also suggested that the, uh, the upstream regulation of the hippo pathway in Drosophila and the mammalian cells was very different and uh, uh, suggesting that many elements have had di diverged uh, during uh, 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 evolution. Um, and, and so you can see that there are ver various question marks here in this, in this model. Still, in 2011, uh, Merlin was placed uh, upstream of the hippo pathway uh, uh, also in, in mammalian cells. Um, and, and, and this is an, was then became a very active area of investigation. And as uh, in, uh, in investigators working in the EPO uh, field became interested in Merlin, and uh, uh, various models then emerged uh, uh, to explain the link between mammalian Merlin and uh, the EPO pathway. Uh, for example, uh, Camargo and colleagues uh, uh, proposed that uh, um, uh, Merlin uh, would uh, uh, bind uh, to alpha catenin uh, and uh, uh, regulate uh, the um, um, binding of phosphorylated YAP, preventing its entry into the nucleus. Uh, DJ Pan and colleague uh, uh, insisted on the uh, conservation of the pathway in. Uh, Drosophila and mammalian cells, uh, uh, but modified the, the initial model that Merlin would bind to Kibra and expand it with a variation of this model in which Merlin would recruit uh, directly LATS uh, to the plasma membrane, facilitating its phosphorylation by an upstream component, which here is indicated as MST, uh, but um, data, subsequent data, suggested to be actually a distinct. Uh, uh, kinase. And uh, 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 Joe Kissel had ident identified andromotin, uh, a component of tight junction, and demonstrated that Merlin can bind to andromotin and displays uh, reach, which is a, a gap for RAC. And so this mechanism will lead to inhibition of RAC and their bypack. Um, modulating uh, the strength of signaling through the RASMAP kinase pathway. Um, and obviously, we have shown uh, that Merlin also accumulates in the nucleus to uh, regulate cool 4 d cuf one uh, So in 2011, the, 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 in spite of our result, uh, there was considerable, I think, uh, skepticism about uh, the uh, um, the model we had proposed, and in general, uh, uncertainty about the mechanism by which Merlin would mediate contact inhibition and suppress tumor regenesis, which I would like to point out may be, di may be distinct. And so, you know, it's sim to simply reconcile the model, one would have to simply assume that Merlin can function as a mediator of contact inhibition at the cell cortex through one of these various mechanisms and by function in tumor suppression by entering into the nucleus, for example. Um, but we were actually um, uh, struck by experiment we have already done um, uh, for our cell paper. And these are gene expression experiments, uh, um, gene expression analysis experiments performed in uh, NF2 mutant Schwann cells in which we had knocked down decaf or re-express Merlin and various controls. But if I just point out to, the, uh, to these two relevant lanes, you can see that the knockdown of 
decaf and the re-expression of Merlin caused similar gene expression changes. In fact, uh, about 70% of the genes which are regulated by re-expression of Merlin are also concordantly regulated by knockdown of decaf, uh, consistent with the hypothesis that, that loss of Merlin induces an oncogenic uh, uh, gene expression program largely through um, uh, upregulation of, of cool 4 decaf one But among the genes uh, that were regulated uh, uh, by both uh, uh, loss of Merlin and uh, uh, decaf was a group of IPO pathway target genes. And this led us to hypothesize that cool 4 decaf one could influence uh, 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 the HIPPO pathway. And uh, we set out uh, to understand the mechanism. The uh, first experiment we did was uh, to um, uh, examine the hypothesis that cool 4 decaf one uh, uh, indeed regulated the output of the HIPPO signaling pathway, that is the activation of YAF. So in this experiment, we express uh, uh, Merlin, re-express Merlin alone and in combination with decaf uh, in uh, uh, um, NF2 mutant cells. And as you can see, when you express Merlin in these cells, you can cause phosphorylation and inactivation of YAP. This is only partially reversed by co-expression of wild-type <coughs> decaf. However, if we re-express a mutant or decaf that lacks the Merlin binding site, then we can completely reverse this phosphorylation. And conversely, if we knock down decaf, we can see a robust uh, phosphorylation of YAP and uh, uh, suppression of the expression of a, a canonical target gene, CTGF. At the same time, uh, uh, we see nuclear extrusion of both uh, YAP and TAS, and also an attenuation of uh, uh, TAD-dependent transcription. YAP and TAS function as a transcriptional coactivator of TEA, the transcription factors. And so this result is fully consistent with uh, the hypothesis that cool 4 decaf one uh, regulates uh, the HIPPO pathway by uh, regulating, uh, <coughs> inducing dephosphorylation of YAP and thereby activation of TEA-dependent transcription. <coughs> now, the next question was whether <coughs> Merlin was able to influence uh, the HIPPO pathway by uh, regulating the transmission of uh, signaling through the core cassette that had been defined in Drosophila. And this core cassette consists of the HIPPO kinase itself, MST12, the adapter salvador, and LATS12. Um, so the most conclusive experiment we did was to knock down Salvador 1, uh, in mammalian cells, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, reintroduce uh, uh, in these cells, uh, uh, in these NF2 mutant cells, Merlin. And as you can see, in control cells, uh, you can see the Merlin can induce phosphorylation of YAP quite robustly, and in Salvador 1 knockdown cells, this phosphorylation is fully conserved. So clearly, uh, Merlin is acting independently of the HIPPO pathway, of the core cassette of the HIPPO pathway, but not independently of LATS1 and 2. So if we uh, knock down LATS1 and LATS2, uh, this phosphorylation induced by Merlin is completely abolished. So at least in our system, um, it is LATS1 and 2 that, as in other systems, which phosphorylate in the, in the inactivate YAP and TATS. So at that point, we took a, a, a sort of an unbiased approach, and we tested the ability of cool 4 decaf one to interact with all the components of non-components of the HIPPO pathway. And uh, we discovered that uh, uh, decaf can interact with both LATS1 and LATS2. Uh, in both uh, uh, 293 cells, but also under endogenous conditions. And of course, this suggests the possibility that cool 4 decaf one would ubiquitilate uh, LATS1 and 2. Uh, we verify that indeed uh, uh, LATS1 uh, uh, and LATS2 are ubiquitilated. We notice a difference 
in that last one is clearly poly ubiquity latent, while last two is uh, oligo mono or oligo ubiquity latent. And mass spectrometry uh, revealed that in fact uh, last one is ubiquity latent at a single residues in the kinase domain, while last two is uh, ubiquity latent at multiple uh, lysine throughout the sequence uh, uh, of the molecule. And in fact, each site. Uh, is uh, either mono or diubiquity related in various proportions. Um, then, uh, of course, we wanted to uh, examine whether indeed uh, uh, cool for the CAF1 mediated ubiquity relation of LATS uh, in uh, cells. And here are the results uh, uh, as they relate to the polyubiquity relation of LATS1. And if we treat cells with MG132, we see an increase in the ubiquity relation on LATS1 as expected. This increase is eliminated by knockdown of DCAF. Uh, and more importantly, uh, when we uh, do cyclohexamide chase experiment in control and DCAF knockdown cells, uh, we see that the knockdown of DCAF greatly stabilizes uh, um, the uh, um, LATS1, uh, the half-life of, of the protein in control cells uh, is about 0.5 hours, and this is greatly increased in uh, DCAF knockdown cells. And so this is fully consistent with the idea that cool 4 DCAF1 mediates polyubiquity relation at a single site of cool 4 DCAF1, especially DCAF1, uh, sorry, LATS1 uh, targeting uh, for uh, proteasome-mediated degradation. Now, last two is a different story. So it's, it's mono or diubiquity related at various um, sites, and this results in loss of kinase activity. Um, so the experiments uh, uh, then uh, uh, led us to consider the hypothesis that Merlin would inhibit uh, the uh, uh, ability of cool for the CAF1 uh, to recognize targets, uh, target substrates, including. Uh, uh, LATS1, and in this experiment, we simply expressed the increasing concentration of Merlin and monitored the association of uh, uh, DCAF1 with LATS. And as you can see, as we increase the concentration of Merlin, we see a decrease in the association of DCAF with LATS. So this experiment, together with other uh, biochemical experiments, led to the conclusion that Merlin binds through the firm domain to the carboxy terminus of DCAF and uh, uses the extended coil-coil uh, domain to occlude the surface of the WD40 domain, which is involved uh, in recognition of LATS. So in the absence of Merlin, recognition of LATS by cool for decaf one is greatly enhanced, leading to uh, um, loss of LATS1 and LATS2 activity. So working drosophila had suggested that uh, all components of the EPO pathway, with the exception of YAP, resides permanently in the cytosol or even at the cell cortex. And uh, our results uh, suggested instead that at least LATS would uh, enter into the nucleus. So we wanted first uh, to firmly demonstrate that um, uh, nuclear entry of Merlin is necessary for uh, regulation of the EPO pathway. And we did this by first identifying a nuclear localization sequence to which uh, I alluded at the beginning of the talk in the amino terminus of Merlin. Uh, either deletion of these three amino acids or replacement, the simultaneous replacement to aniline blocks nuclear entry on Merlin, as illustrated here in control cells. And uh, this is really a, a good mutation, even in presence of leptomycin B, which blocks nuclear export of Merlin, causes even a, an, an increase in uh, accumulation of Merlin on the nucleus. Even in the presence of this drug, there is no nuclear accumulation of the mutant. And as you can see here, uh, these mutants, the mutants that are unable to enter into the nucleus, are also unable to uh, suppress the activity uh, of YAP. 
and in parallel they are also unable to suppress proliferation and soft tiger growth. Uh, then we started to uh, re-examine the localization of various components of the hippopathway in mammalian cells. Uh, these are normal mesothelial cells and what we see is that while as expected uh, Salvador and MST1 uh, localize predominantly to the uh, cytosolic and crude membrane fraction in both sparse and confluent cells, uh, both LATS1 and 2 uh, localize predominantly uh, or are enriched in the nuclear fraction. An immunofluorescence staining experiment did confirm these results. There was a significant fraction of LATS1 in the nucleus and a smaller fraction uh, as cell to cell junctions in these normal cells. So we became curious about this small fraction also because we had the opportunity to hear some uh, of the results which were eventually published by DJ Pan uh, in cells. And he had uh, uh, results suggesting that Merlin would recruit LATS at the plasma membrane, facilitating its phosphorylation and activation by an upstream kinase. So what we did was to uh, um, express either wild-type Merlin or various tumor-derived forms of Merlin in NF2 mutant meso-33 cells, and then monitor the effect of expression of Merlin or its mutant on the localization on LATS1. And as you can see, in control cell, LATS1 again is in the nucleus, in part at uh, the cell periphery. Expression of Merlin can increase this localization at the cell periphery, but the mutant form of Merlin uh, are able to do the same. That is, the mutants that have lost tumor suppressor activity retain the ability to, to recruit, at least upon our expression, um, LATS at the plasma membrane. And in agreement with these results, what we found was that, uh, as anticipated, um, DCAF1, uh, uh, wild-tab Merlin can interact with DCAF1, but uh, uh, none of the mutants uh, uh, that interacts uh, um, with, uh, with DCAF1 uh, lose the ability to interact uh, with LATS. In other words, uh, the mutants the tumor-derived mutants, uh, uh, as we had shown, don't interact with DCAF, but they retain the ability to interact uh, with LATS1 upon overexpression. But this interaction is actually really very weak. It's only seen upon overexpression, and if you look at the stoichiometry, it's much lower than inter the interaction of DCAF with LATS. Um, and, uh, Finally, uh, we look at the ability of these tumor-derived mutants to regulate YAF, and uh, what we saw to our delight is that all the mutants uh, had lost the ability to induce phosphorylation and inactivation of YAF, suggesting the possibility that indeed the cool 4 dcaf one would promote oncogenesis predominantly by inactivating LATS and thereby activating uh, YAF. So we then use our usual bioinformatics approach. We, der we derived uh, uh, gene expression uh, um, uh, data sets from control cells, cells in which we had inactivated simultaneously YAF and TAS, and cells in which we had inactivated DCAF. And we saw a, significantly o a significant overlap in the given expression pattern caused by inactivation of DCAF and YAF and TAS. Um, this is significant, but it's not as extensive as the overlap we had seen between Merlin and cool 4 dcaf one And so this suggests that the cool 4 dcaf one uh, can function also independently of LATS1 and 2, presumably by uh, uh, ubiquitilating other substrates. Um, and they also suggest that YAP and TAS uh, have other inputs in addition to cool 4 dcaf one and this is well known uh, now. Um, so taken together, these, re these experiments uh, uh, suggest, uh, I think, the following linear model. Merlin suppresses cool 4 dcaf one uh, inhibiting its ability to inactivate LATS1 and 2, and this causes phosphorylation and inactivation on YAP and TAS. 
And so to uh, test this model uh, in a formal genetic setting, we tested whether the in simultaneous inactivation on LATS1 and 2 uh, was sufficient to rescue uh, NF2 mutant cells from the effect of inactivation of cool 4 decaf one So as we, had already, as we have already observed, when we inactivate DCAF in meso-33 cells, we see an inhibition of uh, soft tagar growth, a significant inhibition indeed. And when in the same cells we also inactivate LATS1 and 2, we can rescue completely soft tagar growth. In the, uh, we reproduce the same results in FC1801 uh, cells. These are schwannoma cells. The rescue was uh, significant, but not complete. And in fact, uh, these are the only tumorigenic cells in vivo. When we introduced them in mice, uh, what we saw is that, uh, as we had seen before, knockdown of the calf uh, uh, suppresses uh, uh, tumor growth and simultaneous silencing of LATS rescue tumor growth to significant extent, but not complete. And I think this is actually quite interesting, and it does suggest that, that there are additional substrate of cool 4 decaf one which uh, may be relevant for NF2 loss-driven uh, tumorigenesis. So to validate the importance of these results for uh, human tumorigenesis, we analyzed primary human schwannoma cells from Oliver Hahnemann again, and what we saw was that Merlin does indeed uh, uh, induce phosphorylation and inactivation of YAP uh, in these cells, and that knockdown of DCAF reproduces this effect. We couldn't do, you know, genetic epi complicated genetic epistasis experiments in these cells because actually they grow in vitro only uh, for a week or 10 days. But what we could do was to uh, look at uh, uh, sporadic human meningiomas. And so now these, the sporadic meningiomas fall into classes. About 50% have NF2 mutation, and 50% do not have uh, NF2 mutations. And uh, when we look at NF2 wild-type tumor, we saw that YAP and TAS were expressed at reasonably low levels, and all of that uh, was, I mean, the large majority appeared to be phosphorylated and thereby inactive. In NF2 deficient cells, there was a strong nuclear accu accumulation of YAP at TAS, and uh, the phosphoantibodies did not detect a significant amount of the protein. And, and these data uh, were, were quantified and, and, uh, and proven to be statistically significant. So there is a correlation between activation of YAP and TAS and inactivation of Merlin in sporadic uh, uh, human meningiomas. Uh, to look at uh, mesoteliomas instead, uh, um, uh, we uh, use a bioinformatic uh, approaches. Uh, we essentially had derived uh, uh, gene expression signature um, reflective of inactivation of YAP at TAS, inactivation of DCAF, or uh, uh, gene expression signature at the overlap between uh, these two conditions. And uh, we then uh, classified the mesothelioma according to NF2 mutations and uh, did uh, gene set enrichment analysis. And as you can see, uh, the genes which are regulated by YAP and TAS and DCAF are clearly enriched in NF2 mutant tumors. But what's more, most enriched is the set of genes that are co-regulated by uh, DCAF and YAP and TAS. So these are genes uh, which uh, 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 DCAF uh, uh, regulates through uh, LATS. So I'd like to conclude by acknowledging uh, the people who have done the work in the lab. Uh, these studies were initiated by Tomoyo Okada, who has uh, since left the lab. She identified PAC as a uh, mediator of exit from contact inhibition, discovered that PAC for, um, um, uh, phosphorylates and inactivate Merlin, which is a key finding. And uh, um, Liru Yu uh, um, picked up uh, uh, these studies and started to do tandem affinity purification and mass spectrometry. But the key experiments I've told you about today were uh, almost entirely performed by Wei Li, uh, a talented postdoctoral fellow who is uh, uh, now uh, looking for a, a position, uh, with 
uh, some uh, help from a graduate student, John Cooper, uh, especially in the, with the characterization of the biochemical behavior of tumor-derived mutants, which I did not have time uh, to show you, but were critical uh, to establish the mechanism of action of uh, uh, Merlin. And obviously, uh, we collaborated with a number of investigators, both at NYU, uh, specifically with Mark Ladani, a pathologist, uh, at Cornell with Peng Bozu, who works on cooling ring for ligases and dealt with in vitro bifidylation experiments, with Mattia Karajanis, uh, who is a pediatric neuro-oncologist at, at, at NYU, and with Oliver Anavan, uh, who provided us with the primary NF2 mutant uh, cells from NF2 patients. And thank you very much, and I'll uh, be happy to ask any question you might have. Thank you.